So in review, we talked about virtualization technology, we talked about cloud computing technology, we talked about setup and controlling a collection of virtual machines. So the question is, how can we use this technology for HPC? So you can create a collect virtual cluster built on distributed collection of virtual machines um, controlled by a cloud computing system. You can run different OSs and applications on a finite set of servers without the need to reload and update the hardware servers every time you want to change the OS load. So it can be a very efficient use of hardware and space resources. And sometimes if you're lucky, your campus actually has a central service to let, allow you to use their hardware for your EM images. Um, so if you want to create a virtual cluster, here's some of the, sort of a roadmap of what you have to do. First, you select an OS or Windows image you want to use. Um, you want to um, pick your own, but you want to, you have to do some work to configure the VM image to work with a cloud computing system. Then create your first VM image from DVD or provided instance. So in Linux, you can use Burt Manager. Other cloud computing systems sometimes give you a VM image to start with. And then connect your external network. And you know, I think a good trick is to protect your image from intrusion using IP tables or NAT using a local only IP address. That's what you do behind my firewall. It works really well. Then customize your VM image with the application, libraries, and the MPI version you want to use. Um, install the compilers, libraries, utilities. It just goes on and on. I'm going to open C. It took me a few days to build this. to get all the libraries in place. Use yum, apt-get, or, or like your tarballs. And um, pick an MPI implementation and install it. Then build your application. Um, ensure you got all installed and all the necessary libraries. LDD is a great tool. Does anyone know about L Has anyone used LDD before? Yeah, so here's here's the trick with LDD. If I, if I, someone get, if I compile an application, I've got like, you know, A dot out. So we use dynamic libraries, so I may not, not know if the dynamic libraries are present on the system. So LDD will tell me, okay, it's requiring these dynamic libraries, and these are where they're located. So you can find out right away if it's missing a link to a dynamic library and get it installed. It's an easy way of doing it. Rather than running it, say, look, there's this thing not found. It's a great thing to use. Then you have, what you basically have is a golden master VM image. Then next step, you want to plan out your IP address space for your virtual cluster. Um, and basically, you select the range of IP addresses you're going to assign to the nodes in your virtual cluster. And those will go into Etsy hosts. And each VM instance will need to assign an IP address and host name. Import your golden master in the cloud computing system. Uh, it can be complicated sometimes. Um, when you're building an image on Linux, what you've got basically is your virtual disk, which is a big file, and then you've got virtual machine metadata and another file that talks about what the NIC MAC address is, how many cores, how much memory, all that kind of metadata about the virtual machine. That's usually stored in another file. So in Verse, there's a dump XML command. It'll dump all that out for you so you can import it to another system. Um, then you configure the golden, the cloud computing system to assign IP addresses from your range when it clones out your virtual golden master image. Once that works, it works really well. The problem is getting it working. It takes some work to get it working. Um, so once your cloud computing system has booted all your VM images, you want to make sure you connect to the console or SSH to each image, and then Vert Manager can help with this. And then what you do then is create your SD host and MPI host file and copy it all the virtual nodes. Either use MPD, MPD boot or MPI exec, whatever you're going to use for your MPI system. And then uh, you may want to set up a shared file space if you need it, like a NFS server. And then run your application. So that's basically the steps you have to go through right now to do a virtual HPC cluster as infrastructure as a service. So the, what, from my experience, getting the network working well is the most kind of opaque process. So just, I mean, be warned, you want to spend some time thinking about that before you dive into it. Uh, so in my own experience, I've used Open Nebula to create and clone Windows 7 VMs and Red Hat 6 VMs and run OpenSea parallel and serial versions for Linux and Windows. Once it's set up, it works really well. We're working with FutureGrid right now to create a larger virtual Red Hat cluster for the parallel version of OpenSeas for Nice. And so far in that system, I've got about 10 four-core VMs I've created. They had a maintenance window they had to reboot, so I have to kind of bring them back up. But I'm trying to scale really large with this. Um, so the benefits of virtual HPC clusters, great flexibility. I mean, you own that VM image. You can do whatever you want to with it. You, have, you can have root access to it if the cloud computing provider will let you. Um, it's a great approach for being able to eventually do VM system level checkpointing. There's a potential then for archiving and the long term creation of scientific applications with OS images required for the applications to execute. You can save, share, and retrieve whole virtual clusters. That's really cool. I mean, if, you, if you write a paper based on a parallel application that you ran in your virtual cluster, you can save that virtual cluster as part of the data you're going to archive for the paper. Okay? Um, we're having, so for the NIST nice project, we have 
Over 1.3 million files in the project warehouse have been contributed by the community. I did a file type analysis on it, and one of the most dominant file types was unknown file type, okay? Which means that people uploaded data that we don't know what format it is. It's not PDF, it's not Excel, it's not MATLAB, it's like who knows what. So what, what, what we have to do is we have to tell users, if you're running an application, you're gonna save data files from your application in whatever format you're gonna save it in. We have to have the source code of your application, you have to have a running binary, and we have to know what OS it ran in. Because we need to save all this information so that 10 years down the road, if somebody wants to read that data again, they actually have a hope of having the application run to read the data. Okay, just like that CS MIP I showed you, we need to save the software with the data for long-term creation and archiving. <clears throat> This is a great approach to do that. Also, another benefit is clusters can be created and operated your own by, for you by systems administrators um, without the need to run your own cluster in a lab closet. So let me kind of point this out. Um, rather, than, rather than having run your own physical cluster in a lab or in a closet, you can use VMs as a different approach to kind of create a virtual cluster. You kind of physically separate it from the need to be tied down to some hardware somewhere. Okay, you can move your VM images around. So you kind of kind of disconnected your virtual cluster from the physical hardware. Some drawbacks, uh, performance penalty, latency. Um, you're not likely to have access to a near net switch to a virtualization system. It's, it's, it's not there yet. IP address space can be difficult. It's often not well thought out in cloud computing systems. Um, it'd be really ideal to have a private IP address space that's firewalled, so you can, don't worry about turning on IP tables and all this other stuff in your VM images. Um, the way to do this is with VPNs or VLANs or a firewall, uh, but VPNs can impose a software overhead. And so setting up Etsy host and the NPR is still a little clunky compared to other aspects of managing the VM images. So just be ready for some, having some work to do there. Um, getting a private network working and in place is, still takes some work. Uh, complexity of learning how to use the technology. And you're gonna need some help from systems administrators to get your initial VM image working. Okay. Um, so what I found is some cloud computing systems want you to use like a canned VM image that they know works, but then you're tied to whatever, it's kind of, you're kind of losing that flexibility. So what the dream is you say, you can go to a cloud computing system or provider and say, here's my VM image, go clone it. And I'm gonna give you another version in a couple days. We wanna to get to that point. So my own experience, Open Nebula has been the best. So some examples of virtual HPC clusters in use is FutureGrid. Um, it's an IU project by a test bed for virtual clusters. It's working with Gregor, it's working really well. Uh, Nimbus is another example, the Nice Hub Hub Zero, working on the software as a service level to provide a complete cyber infrastructure for software and engineering. Galaxy Project is another project from Emory that's led by James Taylor. It's providing a data cyber infrastructure for biology. And using this, the users can create on-demand virtual HPC clusters for Doom Blast, I think. IPlan is another example. It's a uh, out of Arizona that's developing a cyber infrastructure for plant biology. And you have a um, system called Atmosphere that lets users create a persistent VM image. And if it uses um, Eucalyptus and OpenStack for that. And then Condor treats VM deployments as jobs. So to get started, if you haven't started already, um, let me give you some advice. So using VMs is a really different way of thinking about computing. When you start doing it, you're always constantly thinking, am I in the VM or am I in the physical system? So you want to do some work with that first to get kind of yours good horse sense about it, I guess, or, you know, working sense. So the best way is to start out with try some software in your computer, make a VM, and try to become familiar with the technology. So in Linux, I'd say try using KVM and Vert Manager. For Windows, Oracle VirtualBox works really well. It's free. It's kind of supported. On Mac, try Parallels. So for an exercise, what I suggest you do is to do the following. Pick your platform, install a virtualization system like VirtualBox, Grab and install the latest Fedoras DVD image, install it in the virtualization system, get it working on the network, and then do a YUM update on that image. You can get all those things working. Then you're gonna get a pretty good sense on your own computer about how this thing works. And I suggest you try starting it down, starting it up, shutting it down, cloning it. Get, get familiar with it on your own local computer first. Then when you go to the larger systems, you'll have some of that basic knowledge of how virtualization works. 